So, I am making version 5.2 of the tweeter. Version 1 was the one that I, uh, it was already version 2 by the way, that I compared to the Dayton Super GP tweeter, which was not a fair comparison to be honest. So far, it doesn't cost much. It sucks, but it doesn't cost anything either. Still unusable. But it uh, kind of uh, made me think, or at least as usual, I would, would like to try uh, to make a tweeter that is useful for my duties. So I got a few things I want, and that is, well, mostly one thing, actually. A tweeter that you can cross as low as possible. Why? Because you are um, able to use loads of kind of woofers uh, and uh, can either cross it really low or use very very cheap filter components like 6db filters. So to keep things cheap and uh, simple as well. So I the, the version 3 was um, made out of this material, it's a 12 micron polyester film or mylar, whatever, with aluminum, 9 micron I believe. And uh, nice stuff, it etches really well because it's a good laminate, of course. Uh, and it uh, extends to 20k with ease. Uh, but it had a really big rising response. If, if I want to use only 60B per octave filters, which I would like to use, I have to have a more like straight curve and not an upwards curve. Because the top end will be too loud, as you noticed in the comparison uh, video, the AB blind test. It was like uh, people said it was bright, which it was, of course. Because if you cross over in the middle somewhere, then the top end will rise still and will be too loud. So what I'm gonna do, there's some uh, foil in the printer right now, which is this foil. It's actually a roll of tape. A insanely big roll of aluminum tape. 30 micron, uh, it's on a polyethylene backing. And it, I think it has a silicon kind of glue on it. I think, but uh, this time I'm gonna do it differently. The other one I printed, etched and uh, stretched and put a, put it on a driver or motor. This time we're gonna print it, cut it up, etch only the coil, uh, stretch a miler on a, on, a, on a motor and then attach the coil. This is nice because uh, I only have to print the coils, and not the whole membrane. So this is what we're going to do. These are the coils we're going to print. Uh, I only have one hand. These are the ones we're going to print. And then we're going to cut them free from the foil. and. Uh, I'll start etching one, of course, because uh, I don't want to ruin my etch path with coils that are of no use. And this is my Xerox solid ink printer, and I'm really glad I have it, to be honest. Uh, I have to select the right printer. Xerox spacer, yeah. And paper selection, transparency, okay. And now uh, we should be off to, uh, ah, there we go. Oh, well, it works in one go. How nice. Oh, nice. I cleaned them the hats. And they are really, really... No, false. 
or at least not many. There are some, by the way. I scuffed the aluminum foil a little bit, and I'm not sure if it works or or not. Well, I'm going to cut them free and uh, etch one of them. I won't bother you with the the same procedure of etching and uh, whatever. I just wanted to uh, record it printing for a change. It's not perfect. And I think I know what it is. There are some uh, settings for, uh, especially for transparencies, that uh, will um, print slowly instead of normal, uh, a little bit faster. But it also makes sometimes it's hard to see. Well, that's impossible to see. Some uh, not sharp lines. So actually, I should do a, like a printer test with foils and just use different settings. I think I can get it sharper than this, but it has a downside as well. I think it uses less ink if I go for the other setting. So it, maybe this kind of uses more ink, so you got better coverage, but it bleeds out a little bit. So that's too bad. Not sure what's the best. Having thicker ink layer or and bleeding, or thinner ink layer and no bleeding, or less bleeding. Well, it will do for a test, that's for sure. So I'm gonna cut those loose and I'm gonna etch one of them. Uh, CNC some uh, frames, attach some mylar. Well, lots of stuff to do. Reason I'm going for this foil, by the way, that was what I wanted to explain, actually. This is much heavier. This is 30 micron foil, aluminum foil, and it has this sticky backside which is also I don't know how thick but it weighs something at least that's for sure uh, and I'm gonna attach to 6 micron mylar the reason I go for thicker and heavier is that this uprising stuff that the previous tweeter had uh, yes it is like a ribbon etc it should be rising up till whatever you know, a perfect ribbon would, would rise endlessly uh, if the weight is low enough. But I actually don't want that. I want a straight line or a straight curve. So it makes filtering more easy. Some people will say, yeah, but lighter is faster. I'm not sure yet if that's true. I might have to look at a sort of an impulse response maybe to, to see if that's true. But I kind of think if it reaches 20k, I mean, it moves 20,000 times a second. Uh, what do you want? I knew, yeah. It's hardly, uh, you can hardly hear 20k. So I'm not sure if it, if it matters if it's lighter and, 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 and moves faster. We're starting to move faster than... Uh, one, what is it, one twenty thousandths of a second. I don't know. I don't know if we can hear that or or whatever. So I'm not sure. But uh, I'm going to try this to, um, to have a little bit more low end compared to high frequencies without just adding that weight. The added that weight I'll do now is in fact a conductor. So it, it still brings something to the table in terms of driving force and hopefully it will end up in the mid-range low end. So yeah, that's it. Hi Poos. Hey, 